There is nothing more annoying and frustrating than receiving one of these very unhelpful error messages when trying to play your favourite PlayStation game remotely. And with the arrival of the PlayStation Portal, there are only going to be more people suffering from these kinds of problems. So in this video, I am going to show you how to set up your console and your network to achieve the smoothest remote play possible. If you're only playing remotely at home, or at least on the same internal network as the console, then simply enabling remote play on the PlayStation should be enough to get it to work. Port forwarding, which we'll come to in a moment, doesn't affect internal network traffic. Oh, and unless you have got a very good wireless connection, you'll probably find that remote play works a lot better if you can connect your console via an ethernet cable. Worth doing if you can. So first things first, let's make sure that remote play is enabled on the PlayStation. To do that from the home screen, select settings, system, remote play, and then turn on enable remote play. If you want to start remote play while the console is in rest mode, something which is very useful when you're away from home, select power saving, features available in rest mode, then turn on stay connected to the internet and enable turning on PS5 from network. While you're in settings, make a note or take a photo with your phone of how your console's network is currently configured. Go to network and then view connection status. You'll see whether you're connected via Wi-Fi or LAN and more importantly, whether you're using an automatic or static IP address. The important things to make a note of here are your MAC address, your IPv4 address, your subnet mask, default gateway and primary DNS address. In order for remote play to work smoothly and reliably, you need to make sure that your PlayStation is always using the same internal IP address. You'll sometimes find that this is referred to as a static IP address, a fixed IP address and sometimes a reserved IP address. And there are two ways to achieve this. The first is to set the IP address manually on your PlayStation and the second way is to set it on your network so that your PlayStation always receives the same IP address from your router. Now, personally, I would recommend setting it up the second way from the network as it does make managing your network a little bit easier. However, if that is a little bit complicated, then setting it up as a manual address on the console will be just fine. To set a fixed IP address on your PlayStation, you just need to do the following. Go to settings and then set up internet connection. Then connect to your preferred network, be that wireless or LAN. Select advanced settings, then go down to IP address settings and press X. Then select manual from the list. You'll then need to enter all of the network settings manually. You can use the details that you made a note or took a picture of from the view connection status page a few moments ago. Once you've done that, you can leave MTU to automatic and proxy to don't use. If you want to set a static IP address for your console via your router, then you'll need to log into that router to access those settings. To do that, you'll need to know what the IP address of your router is. And there's a couple of easy ways to do so. If you're using Windows, press the Windows key on your keyboard and type CMD in the search box, which will open up something called the command prompt. In there, type in IP config that's i p c o n f i g it'll give you what looks like a load of confusing information but what you're actually looking for is the ip address next to something called the default gateway make a note of that that is your router's ip address if you're using a mac you can click on the little apple logo in the top left hand corner then click on settings and network select your active network and then click on details you'll see the router address just there. On an iOS device, go to settings, then Wi-Fi, then tap on the little I next to your wireless network name, then scroll down until you see the router address. 
On Android, it's much the same, although there is a slight discrepancy between different versions of Android, especially between the phone and tablet versions. Either way, tap on Settings, Network and Internet or Connections, then tap on the wireless network name, then the little cogwheel, and scroll down until you see the gateway address. Alternatively, if your internet service provider gave you a router as part of its welcome package, you might find it has a little sticker on which tells you how to access the settings on that router. Once you have your router's IP address, open up your web browser of choice and type that address in the address bar. You'll soon be prompted to enter some login details. Now, if you don't know what those are or you've never changed them, they will be the default login details that your router came with. You might find them on that little sticker on the underside of the router, or there may even be some information on how to change your default credentials on the screen in front of you. Failing that, Google is your friend. Just search for the make and model of your router and you should find what the default login credentials for that are. Each router is different. They have different menu systems and they have different appearances. But generally speaking, you should still be able to quite easily find the network settings part of the router. If you haven't already set a static IP address on your console, then you need to look through the menu systems of the router to find the bit that deals with either static, fixed or reserved IP addresses. And just because these settings can look a bit different from router to router, I've got a couple of examples that show you how to set those static IP addresses on a couple of different routers. This is the TP-Link Archer M600. Once you're logged in, go to Advanced at the top, then Network, then LAN Settings. Scroll down until you see the Client list and Address Reservation list. Tap the little Add button then scan. Then click the plus button to add the PS5 from the list. If the console is listed as unknown, as shown in this example, you can verify that it's the correct device by comparing the MAC address in the list to the MAC address in your PS5 network settings, or in the note or photo of the network settings that you took earlier. Once done, click save. This is the menu system of a Draytech Vigor 2830N. Once you're logged in, go to LAN, then bind IP to Mac and click on enable. Then select your PS5 from the ARP table list. Again, comparing the MAC address in the list to that of your console's network settings. You can add an identifying comment to the entry, then click on update and OK to save. This is the Ubiquiti Unify Ultimate Dream Machine menu. Once you're logged in, Go to Client Devices, then select the console from the list, then click on Settings and tick the Fixed IP Address box, which will then auto-complete the IP address field with the device's current IP. Change it if you wish, otherwise just click on Apply Changes to save. Once you've set your static IP address for your console via the router, each time your console connects to the network, it will always get the same address. One thing to note though, is that if you're switching between Wi-Fi and Ethernet or LAN, then you'll need to set up a static IP address for both connection types. The reason for this is that your Ethernet and your Wi-Fi will have different MAC addresses. So if you only set one of them up and then switch to the other, your router won't know to send that same static IP address to the other connection type. Now that your console is set up on the network, it's time to forward some ports. In simple terms, port forwarding allows external services to connect directly to a device on your internal network. So in this case, it's the PlayStation network connecting directly to your PlayStation console. If you read the official PlayStation Remote Play setup guide, it will tell you that you only need to forward UDP port 8572. Now, in my experience, that just simply is not the case. When I had that port forwarded, I was still experiencing loads of lag, loads of dropouts, and occasionally just a flat out refusal to connect in the first place. So after doing some digging around, I found that you actually need to open these ports. 
Now I have read in some places online that some people have recommended forwarding some additional ports. However, in the last six months since forwarding those ports from a moment ago, I haven't experienced a single problem with remote play. So just like with the static IP addresses, I'm going to show you a couple of examples of how to set up port forwarding on a number of different routers. However, if you go to www.portforward.com, they have a huge list of pretty much every make and manufacturer of router with detailed guides on how to set up port forwarding for each. It's really well worth checking out. This first example is back on the TP-Link router. Go to the advanced tab at the top, then in the menu on the left, click on NAT forwarding and then on virtual servers. Click on the little blue add button at the top. Give the entry a name in the service type box, then enter the port number or port range below. Then enter your console's IP address in the internal IP box. Leave the internal port box empty and then select the correct protocol. Make sure that you have the enable this entry tick box ticked. Then click on save. Then simply repeat this process for all the ports that you need to open. The second example is using this Draytech Vigor 2830. In the menu on the left, go to NAT, then click on Open Ports. Click on the first available number in the list, then click the Enable Open Ports tick box. Add a comment or a name so that you know what it's for. You can actually add all of your port forward entries in this one screen, then click on the Choose IP button. Select the IP address of your console from the list, then enter your port and protocol details. Then click on OK to save. And thirdly, we have the Ubiquiti Unify Ultimate Dream Machine. Here you go to Settings, then Application Firewall, then Port Forwarding. Create an entry, give it a name, enable it, and add all your port details and the console's IP address. It's usually advisable to give your console and your router a little bit of a reboot afterwards just to make sure that those settings have indeed been saved. Once you're back online, that should be it. You should now be able to play all your favourite PlayStation games remotely via your PC, laptop, phone, tablet or, from November the 15th, the PlayStation Portal. I have one on pre-order myself. I'm not entirely convinced about it, but as a gaming dad, I can see it being very useful. When that day comes, I shall let you know what I think. I hope this video has been useful to you. If it has, please do let me know below. Thank you and goodbye.